that. This is Cascadia, designed by Randy Flynn, with illustrations or art by Beth Sobel. And we know Beth has done amazing work with Wingspan and other games. So we know this artwork is going to pop, have a lot of details, and draw you into the gameplay at the same time. From Flat Out Games, partnered with AEG. This is a one to four player game. This says it plays in 30 to 45 minutes. We're going to test out how long it takes to learn the game as well. Age is 10 plus, so it should be easy to get into, but then enough depth for experienced gamers to enjoy. So we should be expecting certain components such as uh, wooden wildlife tokens, habitat tiles, other tokens, and scoring cards. Um, uh, so it goes on, talks about more cards, tiles, score pads, cloth bag. So there's going to be a lot of different components in here. I'm expecting to have a, some punch boards to punch stuff out. But just the point that it's talking about wooding, wooden tokens already, that means it's going to be quality. To me, very rarely do you have wooden components that are not quality. And from my experience with Flat Out Games, they are have been releasing quality games with quality components. So let's check it out. So if you want to learn more about this game, get your own copy. Of course, you can go to www.alderac.com slash Cascadia. So that's www.alderac.com slash C-A-S-C-A-D-I-A. Hopefully we learn enough tonight. Of course, you can also check on the BGG website. For those who don't know, that's Board Game Geek. A lot of us in the industry use that site, but it is not the catch-all, know-all. And it is not required to be part of that community. Just another community we use to... It's essentially the Wikipedia of gaming. So, a lot of us go on there, help edit, and teach each other about games. So don't feel left out if you don't use that website. But it is something I really like to use for information. So let's get that. So this, is, of course, is a square box. It's not some huge box that you can need a huge self shelf space for. Right out of the box. Okay, the rule book right on top, as as we should hope it would. Let's see if I can get the box lid to stand up over here for you. So let's check out the rule book first. So right inside, uh, it talks about the region, so the inspiration for the game, and it kind of immediately describes what the game is about. So it's a puzzly tile laying and token drafting game featuring the habitats and wildlife of the Pacific Northwest designed by Randy Flynn for one to four players ages 10 and up. So right there, that sentence straight up tells you what the themes about where they got their inspiration from. And then it talks about the region, about the game itself, about the team who created it. It's cool to see that right at the beginning. And then of course the components how many pieces you should see of each type, and so it names them plainly. So it's going to be easy to differentiate and sort these components as we open it up. And then set up very linear listed, so it's easy to read with an example over here, which we'll get more into this as we learn how to play later after I unpack it all. It does look like. Uh, because of the background, it may be washing out the color of this, but this is a very plain background, kind of an off-white beige. So it's easy to, it is easy to read. I do apologize for the, the lighting, you know, streaming videos. Lighting's never perfect, but that happens. Talks about turn summary, uh, in-game scoring. Talks about solo mode and variants. Uh, talks about the scoring cards and how to how they actually score if you need more information on them. Uh, and there's like an achievement track it looks like. So as you achieve different things, as you play multiple times and keep going, you can kind of check off, hey, I've been able to do this in the game. So it's really an improvement track to show how well you've done before and how you can really push your sh yourself to do better while playing, which is really fun to do and watch over time. Achievements, um, going over those, 
and then it talks about some of the stuff you would find in the Pacific Northwest region that this was inspired by and those animals that they're referencing in the game and also the locations and then about flat out games and then a, a lot of um, so the credits for who worked on the game stuff and such I'm going to set the rule book aside because I know I'll have to go into it more detail later as I learn the game. But let's get to what's inside the box. Punch it all out and really have some fun here. And of course, oh, we got a nice stack of punch boards here. So it looks like we've got five boards. Throw them over here to the side for now. Get a slightly closer look inside the box. We got a bag of wooden tokens. That look like they've been screen printed. We got our cloth bag. That also has the kind of the elevation lines, kind of like there's mountains and valleys on the bag. So if you'd look at an elevation map, this is the same type of lines you would see on that map they put on this bag, which is really cool to see up front. Some ziplocs for separating things, which is always useful and helpful. You know I like to keep things organized in a box. Uh, we got some cards right here. These might be. I'll have to see what those cards go to if they were additional cards from the Kickstarter or what. So I'd have to look that up. But then we have some primary cards. These are not standard playing card size, more like tarot size cards and a score pad. Uh, this box insert does appear to have shifted a little bit. Um, it does look like it comes out. I could probably just add a little bit of super glue along this edge in here to make it stand up straight. Best insert by no means. Is it the worst insert? Definitely not. I've seen a lot worse. I've seen a lot better. So it's a middle of the road simple insert. But typically when you see a insert like this, most of the time they're designed more for the shipping, uh, for components not moving during shipping and not necessarily storage. So not the worst. So we can set this aside now. Gonna put it over behind me. And let's take a closer look at all the components now. Let's take a nice look at these wooden components. Switch our view real quick. We'll be taking a look inside this bag. Now of course it's gonna come with the silica gel pack, which is helpful to keep moisture out of it so things don't get ruined or messed up. So these appear to be screen printed on one side. So we have our elk, our bear, our salmon, our hawks, and the orange is our fox. So pretty easy to see. Um, both the color of the disc and uh, kind of in general matches the color of the animal but also the animal has, uh, screen print is shaped around it so now I can't say how great that is for colorblind is uh, if you have colorblind issues but I will assume that because the animals themselves are have been cut out and not screened print screen with an extra background that you can at least differentiate the shape on them in addition to the color tone. I may be wrong. If you've played this game and, you have, and you're colorblind in some way, and that causes an issue for you, please let me know. It's something I need more information on. I don't have personal experience with. So I, knowing how to discuss it better when I open these games would be helpful. Now, of course, all of these are typically thrown into the bag which we'll take a closer look real quick on this so a simple cloth bag with drawstring so this is also good for storage but during the game these typically will go in the bag and you're randomly drawing them out for the pool of available pieces to choose from. 
Now, I may have to count out a certain number depending on uh, player count. I'll have to find that out once I get set it up for play. For now, I'm placing them all in the bag itself so we can look at all the other components. Now, assume you are hearing all this quite well because this is relatively close to my mic. Hopefully, this is some kind of that board game ASMR that some people like. If not, not a big deal. Set those aside. Let's take a look at the cards now. So first off, these were in two different bag setups. I'm going to take a look at the one in the envelope sealed uh, sticky style uh, sleeve first, and we'll then we'll take a look at the Ziploc. The Ziploc may be Kickstarter exclusive or extras that they unlocked. I would have to verify. Let's start with, obviously, the main ones. Now, these are tarot-sized cards. Now, first thing I do notice, um, which is often seen with larger cards, um, especially when you do this much printing on them, they're curved. A little unfortunate. Now, I don't believe it should affect gameplay in this case, but that is a bit unfortunate that they do not stay flat. But as we can see, there's going to be actual printing on both sides of these cards. So this first card appears to talk about a the variants. So we have a family variant on one side. Try to make sure we're keeping that in view for you. Uh, shows the five different token icons, uh, grouping sizes, exa uh, quick pictorial examples of those. Now it does say something at the, here at the bottom with the wrong lighting. At angles it's going to be hard to read because it's smaller print. So like at the angle I'm at right now to it, hard to read. Unless I pick it up read it straight on. Uh, it talks about scores, all wildlife per group of that wildlife type. Groups of the same animal may not be adjacent. Okay. Uh, and then the other side, it talks about intermediate variants, group sizes, points. Now, it appears the bottom talks about the same thing as last time. Okay, so we'll set that aside so we can look at these cards now. So it does appear that we have different backs on these. Let's try to lay these out so we can take a, see all of them for a moment. Now I'm going to assume that these different shorter stacks all correlate to the different animal tokens, and it appears they do. So we got, so we got like a brown bear, and then each of these, okay, grizzly bear, not brown bear. My apologies. Uh, have a different scoring grouping style. So in the same way that this family and intermediate variant, I believe this essentially replaces these specific scoring type cards if you're trying to learn the game uh, on easy level with kids or something. So I'm going to assume I'll have to verify and look it up. I think you use one of each animal card per game. So you have a variety of scoring options and each time you play it's random or potentially a very specific setup. And so you can compare how you score one game to the next with those scoring setups. So the grizzly bears um, has a mating pair, so they're kind of side by side. Uh, we have the mother and cubs. Essentially, grizzlies a lot of times will have two cubs, so it's kind of showing one with two others next to it, because you want a group of three to uh, for those. You get grizzly bear families. Uh, and these are just purely different size groups. Uh, more points for a larger group, of course. And then we have the big groups in general. So this is kind of the same as the families, but it starts at a slightly larger size, so probably slightly more difficult to achieve multiple times. So next up, let's look at the fish, or in this case, salmon. So Chinook salmon. So we have the long run, so this is creating a continuous run of, of touching 
salmon tiles. We have shorter runs, so this is one that's probably slightly easier to achieve. Yeah, so the points are a, a hair bit more. Uh, maybe not more. It depends. So as they get longer, they're more on this one, but on this one, the short one just. So they've balanced it a little bit depending on the size, just because you don't go as high. And then we got families in general, so just generalized groups. Uh, this one's runs again, but you have multiple ones again. And this is surrounded. So when you're score salmon and per animal adjacent to run of at least three runs. Uh, okay. So then next up we'll take a look at the red tail hawks, the blue background. First up we have solitary. Uh, so scoring for each separate solitary hawk you have on your board. And it's Kentucky Fried Dice. Hello, hello. Happy Friday indeed. Yeah, this one just arrived in the mail last weekend. And I was excited to finally receive it because I got to help play test back in 2019 at some of the conventions. Kickstarted it and was really excited to finally get it in. So I haven't played in about two years, but I'm opening it up, checking out the components, and then going to attempt to learn the solo mode tonight, live. So I'm probably going to mess up some things. But, yeah, welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing well this week. Let me know what you've been playing, what you've been up to, and how it's been going. I just, right now, going through all the different cards and the scoring things found in the game. Uh, so the red tail hawks, we, like we talked about, we got the solitary hawks for scoring. Uh, connected, so this one would score for each hawk that is not adjacent to any other hawk and has a direct line of sight to a hawk. Okay, so basically there's at least something in between it, but they can't be touching each other. The network of hawks, line of sight, scores for each direct line of sight between two non-adjacent hawks. So kind of like the other one. And then this one is scores for each, the territorial is scores for each pair of hawks, number of unique animal types between them. Okay, so you, you sent this one you'd create a line of two hawks, line of sight, and then all the different types of animals between them can help you score more. Kentucky Fried Dice finally got to play Bristol 1350 and loved it. Well, that's great. It's always a, a great day or great week, whatever, however long it takes to play a game and learn a game. When you play something new and you really enjoy it and love it. it some occasionally you will find games that are disappointing that you've kind of been holding out hope for but when you get that get to a game that you've had high hopes for and it meets all those expectations it's just such a great feeling okay and then we have red fox so this one likes nearby animals uh, nearby pairs of animals nearby related animals or dynamic duos. So fox pairs adjacent to animal pairs. So, so far we've seen a lot of different scoring types from individual to lines to pairs. And last up we have the Roosevelt elk cards. So uh, we have lines of elk. Uh, so this one like straight lines instead of just river runs like the salmon. Oh, and we got Jelly Pie. Hello. Yeah, indeed, it is very beautiful. The artwork that Beth Sobel has done for this is amazing. Yes, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. That's going to help go a long way because I have an additional copy of this game. As part of the Kickstarter, I got an extra copy, and I plan to give a copy away once I hit 100 followers on here. So sharing and following goes a long way. So that's one step closer. Thank you very much. 
So we're talking about the elk, like straight lines, unlike the salmon who don't necessarily have to be straight. They can go in curves and turn as long as they're connected. Uh, formation, so this has the elk, uh, just basically sets of them connected, uh, but in very specific shapes, kind of like herds. Oh, this one's called herds. Scores for each group of elk in any shape. And then we got rings making circular formations. So that's the f five different animals and their scoring condition cards. Now we do have this smaller Ziploc of cards. I can't remember if this was Kickstarter add-on, bonuses. So let's see what added into this. Yep, it says it is the Kickstarter promo cards. Oh, and Jelly Pie says, didn't realize it wasn't following it. Well, that's okay. Not a problem at all. And it's Beyond Dead 13. Hello. How are you today? I do hope you received the giveaway you won last weekend. Um, I shipped the game for the charity board gamer. I believe you won uh, Bite Your Tongue. And then your information was also given to uh, Julie from Greenbrier. Nice. Glad that arrived. So yeah, so this is the Kickstarter promo cards. Uh, five additional cards, one of each animal. So let's go with these are. So we got the grizzly bear that likes equal groups. Let's make sure I can add it to the stack of those. We have the oriented pairs of elk. The nearby diversity for the fox. The on the edge hawk. So it likes being on the outer edge of your habitat. And then last but not least, our gathering of salmon. Uh, so basically runs of three plus salmon for each adjacent animal group size. So you're scoring for the adjacent groups as long as your run of salmon is big enough. Okay, so let's get ready to punch these boards. So this came with five punch boards full of tiles and pine cone tokens. We'll get them all punched out and then I'll get ready to set it up to actually play. And we'll have the score pad, but we'll go over more of that score pad as I finish the game later. Yes, board punching is so satisfying. And part of what I like to do, like, of course, I'm going to punch it, talk about it, how well the components are but occasionally we get that nice clean snap when we punch it and I try to catch that on mic if possible so first I'm going to do in view here because my mic's over here so I won't be able to do it right in front of the camera if I do it that way so that's that's a cl very clean punch at least uh, the the little tab catch on it is very small so very minimal risk of tearing the back of these have the artwork for um, the elevation change kind of like the bag itself did that we talked about so let's see if I can catch one of these snaps on mic well that's great to hear that they punch really clean for you too um, I found that the flat out games typically the quality and consistency of the quality has been very good. So I don't know if you can hear that at all, but maybe you can call it board game ASMR or whatever, but you can he actually hear the clean snap of these, which you don't get in enough games if they're too thick, too thin, or the cut itself is not perfectly through it. Just thinking board game some more. Yep. I know, I know a few people have like joked about that and done it like a YouTube video about it or TikToks about it, but it's it is very satisfying when you find the right sounds. Let's see how well 
these pine cones are punching because these are an odd shape. So that one almost got caught. So that one, yeah, so they're trying to get caught in that bottom corner just because it's a tight cut. But they're not tearing yet. So if you just push the top and then pull it out, it should not be an issue at all. So that's one of five boards. So, since you talked about it punched very well for you and you recently got it, have you been playing it yet? Or did you just open and punch it? And if you did play, what player counts have you tried it at? What did you like the most about the game? as I knock the lid off the table. We'll go for a little bit more of that ASMR quality pop if we can. Now, as you'll notice, a lot of these, well, yes, uh, yeah, I was going to say most of, and then I wanted to correct myself and verify, but so every tile shows a habitat, and then some show one, some show two, and some of these even show three animals on the tile. So we've got uh, habitats um, like the water, we got the green woods forest which i'll have to verify what the rule books like to indicate them as being uh well, we got potentially arid uh, well, it's, i don't think it's deserts it's more like grain fields it might be deserts we'll see what the, and the rules say it is Now, if I remember correctly from the last time I played this, so but I'll verify the rules before I start playing, is the animals shown on the tile are the types of animals that can be placed on that tile, or the type of animal token that can be placed on the tile to make a home on that habitat. So, which tile you select is just as critical as the animal you end up drafting to be able to pair them together in some way. Well, thanks for that. I appreciate you helping remember and not making me feel bad for forgetting something, but considering I haven't actually played in two years, uh, I play tested this back in 2019 at the game conventions, I got to hang out with uh, Randy Flynn. He was good friends with uh, kind of the booth stuff I was helping out with. And so I s only played once or twice, but I saw several tests of this happening. And an earlier version, but immediately I knew and could tell just how good a game this was. So I was excited to back it. And now I need to uh, sort this out and figure out the solo setup. So you played the online version they had up for Kickstarter and I was hooked. Okay, nice. I actually never ended up playing the online version. Um, I don't know if it was just because I was playing so many other online games at that point in time. Or there's also a point in time that 
like for the most part I was avoiding Kickstarter because I'd spent way too much on it except for like ones I specifically knew were coming from ones I'd play tested and, and kind of somewhat knew the people so I may have like just jumped on the Kickstarter backed it and then ran away but either way uh, like you tell like you said you were hooked immediately so and kind of I was too but I was just hooked from the physical copy so let's verify the solo setup and I can probably switch the view back because we'll be using this view for most of it which the starter habitat tiles or these triangle ones that have three habitats on them 